If you have some from the body, be present with the Lord. That's right. Yeah. The day's coming. If you'll turn with me, that sure is. Nehemiah. <laughs> Go back to Nehemiah chapter 4. We are still in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 4. And the expositor is page 802. That might help you a little bit. Oh, am I, Nehemiah. <coughs> <laughs> oh, well, we're in Nehemiah. It's good, though. We've been going through the book of Nehemiah. Well, we've been in the book of Nehemiah. We're going to start at verse 6, pretty much where we left off last week. We were going over some things. We've been on a sermon series. It was called Repairs of the Breach. This is called to stand. To stand. Everybody there yet? Uh huh. All right. Then I'll start with verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Samuel, Tobiah, and the Arabians, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped. They were very raw, and conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it, if you'll bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to pray right now that there be if in any type of hindering spirit that would try to come in and hinder your gospel message. Dear Lord, let it go right now and be cast out. We thank you, Jesus, for your word. We thank you that your word brings life and life more abundantly, dear Lord. We thank you that you're reviving us right now in our spirit, dear Lord, that you're speaking to us and you're feeding us, Lord Jesus, from that table of showbread, that manna from heaven, Lord God. Lord, we thank you. We ask, dear Lord, to help us decrease and you increase that way we receive your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. So for the last, I believe, <clears throat> I'm not mistaken, about five weeks we've been going over comparing the day of Nehemiah <coughs> and what happened in the day of Nehemiah as the Lord had called Nehemiah back to Jerusalem to rebuild what had been torn down, hewed down, and the gates burnt down. And so we've been comparing that day with our day and how many things had come into the church as a whole and had torn down the wall of truth the wall of love, the wall of unity, and the wall of holiness. And we went over that in the first two or three weeks. And then we went through the gates of faith that had been burnt down. And many, and as the church as a whole, we can see these gates of faith have been burnt down and some of these walls are just collapsed. But guess what God's doing? He's using, He's telling us and teaching us and using us to help rebuild these walls and rebuild these gates of faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. The place that truth inside of our hearts, and that where we go out amongst others, that truth comes forward from us. And not only that, he'll bring people to you. How, how you know that? I guarantee you, I can, I can ask for a show of hands of how many this week that God has brought by your path, just unexpectedly brought someone to you, and you started talking about God. And you don't even know where it come from. It may have not been you that brought up God. You know what I'm talking about? It happened. Because he gives you the word, usually on Sundays, Wednesdays, Sunday nights, and then when he brings somebody by your path, guess what? That word starts coming forth. Uh -huh. It starts edifying. Mm -hmm. It starts drawing those, whether they be an unbeliever or a believer, it edifies the believer and it draws the unbeliever to want what you got. Because it's a living word. This word right here is not a dead word. It's a living word. Amen. And when you have the truth, you talk about life. And life more abundant. When you've got law and legalism and you don't have the truth, it's bondage. And many people have bondage and they don't want bondage. They've been in bondage all their life. They want the real Jesus and they want a taste of that living water. Amen. Those rivers of living water, the anointing that comes flowing out of your belly. Amen? Those who believe upon Him, it says in John chapter 7, praise God, will have rivers of living water flowing out of them. And you can't shut them rivers off. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, you can be out there. It, it don't matter if you're at Walmart. Those rivers will come flowing up, won't they? Yeah. Sometimes you'll grab on somebody and pray for them in public. <laughs> then when you get in your car, you're going, oh, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> but it did. Because you can't shut the rivers off, can you? Man, there's times I've even tried. I was like, well, I'm going to restrain myself. I just couldn't do it. You just feel it bubbling up. But it did. I did something that was my opening praise God. We're going to go back to Nehemiah. But you see here, they had a mind to work. 
That's pretty much what I'm talking about now. If you've got the mind of Christ, guess what you're doing? you always got your mind stayed upon the living God and the heavenly <coughs> things of God. And you speak forth the oracles of God, as it says in Ephesians. You speak these things forth. You have a mind to work for the Lord. You have a mind to see souls saved, people set free, and people delivered by pointing them to Jesus Christ and His work at the cross. Mm -hmm. These things flow out of your heart. Even when you're trying to study, even when you're trying to pass tests, even when you're trying to go through your daily routine and your job, you still have that shut up in your heart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's still there because you've got the mind of Christ. You've got a mind to work. Not to work for your salvation. Not to work your way into heaven. But to work for the Master. From dawn to setting sun, as the song says. Amen. Mm -hmm. You've got that mind inside you. Because those treasures in heaven are those souls. God desires to save souls. It's His will that none should perish, but that all come to everlasting life. Right. Praise God. And so he's put that inside your heart. And that's why you see a lot of people in the social chat rooms, with the social networks, even on the internet, posting things about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Many times they've got that mind inside them to work and they want to see people come to the glory of the Lord. Come to salvation because Amen. it's wonderful, y'all. There's many years I ran from the Lord and I'm so glad he finally cracked his hard nut noggin right here and it's hard enough to crack and finally got into my heart and drawed me to his goodness. Amen. 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 There's people out there that need Jesus. We all need him. Some just don't know they need him. Am I telling a lie? No. But it came to pass that when Sambalot and Tobiah and the Arabians, the Amorites, the Astrodites, heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, they were very wrong. You know it says in 2 Corinthians 5, I want to say 19, that we've been given, we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. <coughs> we're a new creature in Christ, so we are actually the ones helping to repair the breach. Now, He's the one that repaired the breach, but He uses us as vessels, amen. He's given each one of us a ministry of reconciliation. And when you start <coughs> doing this ministry, and the breaches begin to be stopped in people's lives because of what you said, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be some opposition. They're going to be very wrong. And what they did, it says in verse 8, they conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. They conspired. Now, this, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Hello. No. It's hard to see that sometimes, but we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's spiritual conspiracy is what's happening here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These were spiritual things. The spirits were using these men. They were using, the enemy uses people to conspire against the message, to conspire against you because you present the message. If you are going forward for the Lord, if you are ministering for the Lord in any, in any way, shape, form, or fashion, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a spiritual conspiracy come against you. 